Jesus. When we woke up this morning, he was still sitting on the throne. When we woke up this morning, he was there. When we woke up this morning, that name was still as powerful. That name lives on forevermore. Can we just lift up that name? Can we just worship that name? Jesus. Jesus. There is liberty in the name of Jesus. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. And that name is Jesus. La Mario no Mosaye, Le Maharie Le Bakaye, Amashaye. The spiritual realm begins to shift and adjust itself to the name. Can we just begin to speak that name? Can we just walk in authority this morning? Shadarabakat Satarya Liberende Libekia. Come on, we are gathered as the body. We are gathered as the body. Reba yele bakai, liba mar yele bashai, lubu yele baka, yele basha, le mar yele baka, li borobo sha, le mahar yele baka, li borobo sha. So namaka, so namaka. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Shuda Bakaye. Father, I thank you for your love that you have placed upon me. I thank you for invoking the name within me. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to me, giving me ears to hear and eyes to see what you are cooperating in the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, O Lord, for every word that has been spoken. I thank you, Lord, for every revelation that has been given. I thank you, O Lord. As we walk in newness with you, O oh God, I thank you, O Lord, for opening up every door, for opening up every door in the Spirit on which we can explore and which we can know more of you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I can never get enough of you, Father. I can get a never, never get enough of your love. I can never get enough of what you have done for me, O oh Lord. I thank you, Jesus. You are my father you are my father habay ala ma yala ma sataye riba mo rebe sika li ma na mo robo sa li ma rebe yurubu sha li ana da baka la mo rebe she li ba re ma mo sha li bo ra mo sa li ba no bo sa ho ba ye be yorobo sha so banda marie le 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 borianda la marianda la baka lima marie le le marie le 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 robo sha so ba ha ye so ba ha ye so ba ha ye can we recognize who he is to us? He is our Father. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is my God. In the name of Jesus, can we recognize who he is this morning? Can we edify who he is this morning to us? Can we give him all the glory this morning? Every piece of glory. Can we give it to him this morning? Shobo Rebeki. Lebe Lebe Robo Shabakata Yelebere. 
There is liberty in this house. There is liberty in this house. Sha, sha, shure yarahaye, suta, subahaye, sure behaye, sure behaye le bahaye, sure behaye le bahaye, sure behaye le baha. Come on, let's push. Let's push. Let's push. Let us push. Shabakai elibashaye. Kurubu sataye. Come on, push past the veil of the flesh. Push past the veil of the flesh in the name of Jesus. No more robo sata bahaye. Libo robo sata bakat sataye. Kurebe yele berele le barriana la maca. Ha ba yele berele le berele le berse. I need you, Father. I need a Savior. I need a Savior. I remind this flesh that I still need a Savior. That I can't do it without Him. I still need you, God. I still need you in every step that I take. In every moment of my life, I still need you. My will can only go so far, Father. I need your will. I put aside my will. I want your will to be done this day, O oh Lord. I want your will to be done this day. Hama Yorubu Shabahaye. Remaha Yelebarianda Labaka. Robaha Yelebahaye. Rea Baha Yorubusha Sha Baha Yele Baha In the name of Jesus. Shanda Labakata La Yele Baha. In the name of Jesus. For these past few days and these past two weeks, there have been several battles, not battles of the flesh, just battles in the spirit. And for these past couple days, there has been the questioning of who I am. On who I am to God. And the identity that we have is no longer ours when we take up that name. When we take up that name, it is no longer about us. We are His living temple. We are the temple of God. What He decides to do and not to do is completely up to Him. This morning in prayer, God, being as gentle as He is, just begin to remind me that You are my Son. Just as gentle as the living God can ever be. 
just a reminder of who you are to him. For some of you, the enemy has been having you question who you are to him. If you are even capable or qualified to be used by God. But there is a spirit that rose up inside of me when just that reassurance of who I was to him was spoken. It doesn't matter what the enemy tells you who you are. It's about what the Father says who you are. So this morning, I don't know about you, but there was a holy unction in the Spirit to to just go into war. To go into war and to go and claim dominion and authority in the Spirit. There is something that rises up against... uh, the gates of hell, which is the sons of God that are led by the Spirit of God to speak the things of God. So this morning, if you are dealing with an identity crisis, here's the solution. Lift up your hands and just repent. Just repent. That aligns you back with what God has this day. So this morning, if you are dealing with an identity crisis, can you just stand in Jesus' name and just begin to lift up your hands? As we begin to pray this morning and as we continue to pray, can we just receive the love of God? If we confess our sins, He is able to forgive. He is just. He is forgiving. He is a loving God. So we can realign ourselves to the will of God. It doesn't matter what's been going on. You can pick up where you left off with God. You can walk back back in that same authority it is not the spirit of condemnation that drives God's love towards you it is a pulling in the spirit to to allow his love to work within you so can we just receive that right now if you are dealing with an identity crisis can you just realign yourself with God this morning father forgive me of every sin every work of iniquity every time I miss the mark father when I spoke my own words when I thought the thoughts I shouldn't have in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus and just receive the love of God this morning just receive the love of God this morning just receive the love of God this morning Re maha yurubu shamba rendele beshi. Ka maha ye. Ka maha riele basha. Ka mo robo sabaka. Ko re me le me le basha ye. Lubu sata ye. Fu rendele beshi. Father, here is the flesh. I put it aside. He ka ye ya bo robo saye. You are a consuming fire, Father. Ruba haye, ruba haye, robo sandele bere kitaye. Suba haye. Now can we just worship Him? Can we just thank Him? Can we just thank Him? You are victorious. You are victorious. You are Him. You are the living God. You are and He speaks through you. Can we allow that Spirit to speak through you this morning? Can we allow Him to speak through you this morning? Come on, speak that language. Speak that language that your Father has given you. He has given you that authority to speak. Come on, there is great expectation this morning. There is great expectation this day. In the name of Jesus. 
Shuryo rombo shabaka sata ya leberende leberende lebeki. Subaha ya leberianda labaka. Kubaha yorobo shabaka ya leberende lebosha. Subaha ya shurebehe kaya. Shalabaranda labaka ya. Rubaha ya lebakita. Ruba ha ye le basha ye, kuba ha ye beshi kaba ha ye. Sure be le bakanda la baka ye de be kita. Ruba ha ye de me shete ye be rende le basha. Suba ha ye le baha ye robo kuka baha ye. Lord Jesus name. In the name of Jesus, Shalabahar ya rebeki haye, Ruba haye lebaka ya roboshi, Si lebe lebo kuka bahar ya derbeshiti. Can we all stand in this place as we prepare to worship? Can we just do that already wherever we're at right now? Can we just lift up our hands and sing praises to the Almighty God in Jesus' name? We worship you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, la 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 Sing a little louder than before I want to jump higher than before I want to shout louder than before Freedom, freedom higher than before I want to love you more than before I want to worship deeper than before I've got to scream louder than before No more chains, no more bondage, I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more because I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am
guilt's no more chains, no more bondage, I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. There's no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more because I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage.
will keep praying and I will keep fasting until it comes send it to every nation I'll keep believing I'll keep interceding until it's done pour it out God pour it out God we're ready we're ready pour it out God pour it out God we're ready we're ready Lord send a revival I'll keep praying I will keep praying and I will keep fasting until it comes send it to every nation i'll keep believing i'll keep believing i'll keep interceding i'll keep interceding until
city right now, wherever you live. Pour it out, God. Would you begin to pray? Would you begin to intercede? Pour it out, God. You've been sent to that city to represent the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You live in that city so you could take dominion and authority. You've been sent to that city, God. Would you begin to envision God using you? Oh, sending you to that city. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pour it out in my city, Lord. Pour it out in my neighborhood, oh God. Let it be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Would you pray right now? Would you intercede? Would you begin to pray right now for the people around that neighborhood? That God will begin to draw them to the school. That God will begin to, oh, to allow them to come to drawing of the Spirit. 
Lord, for Maryland, oh God, for Hilda, oh Lord, that they would come in Jesus' name and hear the truth, the gospel. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for Ramiro oh God, for Jessica's family, Lord, her sister, her brothers, oh Lord, her in-laws. I pray you draw them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for Elsa and her family, oh God, to come. I pray anointing, Brother David, Lord, to preach. Lord, the reign of the Word of God for Daniel, Lord. God, for Sister Evelyn, Father, for faith, oh Lord, he how many of you feel a witness in the Holy Ghost that God is drawing that God is hearing your prayers somebody worship him right now somebody begin to thank God for the victory that's here the victory that's here right now the victory that's happening right in this moment shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and bless the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. He for it over my city. Yeah. Would you close your eyes with me right now? And what, would you let your faith, just close your eyes and would you let God, through your faith, give you a picture, a mental image called a vision of what it will be like for you as God pours His Spirit over your city, over your neighborhood over your places of employment over where you live come on in Jesus name and as God gives you that picture would you begin to lift up your hands and would you believe it with all of your heart with all of your mind with all of your soul with all of your strength and begin to see yourself as God sees you and begin to see yourself as God has called you. Would you kinda rabotori and in the name of Jesus? In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. That's right, just keep flowing with the Holy Ghost. As long as it's flowing, just keep flowing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're going to flow with the Holy Ghost today the name of Jesus. That's okay. Yield to the Holy Ghost. He's doing something in you. Yes. Yield to the work of His Spirit. God is so good. He can move corporately as a body with us and He can work individually in every heart and every soul, but we got to yield to it. What does that mean? We need to allow the Spirit surrendering our will because we know his will is perfect, amen. God, I give you my will today. I don't know everything, Lord, but we know, I know that you know it, Lord. So I yield to you, oh God. Of what I don't know, oh God, I am gonna trust in you. If your spirit feels that, let's raise our hands to God, for that is a way of surrender a way of surrender when we lift our hands to the Lord in the name of Jesus 
That's right. That's right in the name of Jesus. As you yield to him, he could do some healing in your heart. He could do some healing in your heart to remove anything that is hindering you to receive his complete love in the name of Jesus. Let him heal your heart. That's right. That's right. He doesn't want you to hold on to that. The things in the past, he wants you to let go and let him love you as you are to receive, to receive that release in the name of Jesus. That's right. The Lord is doing his work right now in the name of Jesus. I let it go, Lord. I leave it in your hands, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And he's doing an exchange in his spirit right now. He's giving you his love, his love that heals, his love that forgives. Yes, yes, his love that forgives that you may also forgive, that you may also forgive, that you may also let go freely in the name of Jesus. That's the greatness of his power. Thank you, Lord, for your work, oh God, for what you're doing in the name of Jesus. Flow, flow in the spirit. Flow in the spirit. God wants to do a work in you. In the name of Jesus, that's right. For there is power as we gather together. There is power when we gather together. Receive. Receive what you need in the name of Jesus. If you don't know what to say, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God is giving you a release, Jess. God is giving you a release and a healing in your spirit. In your spirit, in the name of Jesus. It is for you. It is for you. In the name of Jesus. He wants to give you rest today. He wants to give you rest in your spirit, in your emotions. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you feel that you receive that release, that blessing, you can go ahead and praise him. If you're still praying, you could still keep praying. But if you feel that release, you can give him the thanks and give him the glory for what he's doing. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. While, I was, while we were singing today that last song, God put this thought in my heart, and I, I asked him, do you want me to share it? And I feel the liberty to share it. He said, God, as we are praying, as we are singing, as we're faithfully doing what we feel he's leading us to do, he said he's doing a work in the spirit. He wanted to let you know that you don't have to get that confirmation for what you see physically in the natural, what you feel. But he said, I'm doing a work in the spirit. And Pastor David, that is also for you. In Jesus' name, I, I just felt that. And the Spirit goes, I'm doing a work in the Spirit. And I'm just going to go with the flow. Church, we have so much power. We have so much power. But the power is released greater when we're together in unity. Corporately is a spirit of unity as well. But unity is... In seeing the will of God, believing in the will of God. Amen. And, and the next few services or teachings, we're going to touch on that. But we got to be ready. We got to be ready. I believe if we were going to change the format of our service, if we're going to call it differently, I know we usually start with singing. We call it right. We start with singing. But I say the beginning of the service, I say 10 o'clock should be corporate prayer. I say it should be. And then we go worship. When you worship, you are ready to worship. You don't worship to feel good. Because I know worship can make you feel good, right? But I'm going to let you know this. I feel we're, we're, we're getting a higher realm now. But God wants to prepare the body. When you come, usually, our, if we call it pre, pre-service prayer, it, it starts at what? 9.45? You could spend some time relational prayer, getting your heart ready, right? Confessing, repenting, you can do that. And I know there are those that are leading up here as well. But when it comes 10 o'clock in the morning, we should be ready for corporate prayer. And I'm saying corporate, that's kingdom prayer. Because there's power when we gather together, when we pray together in the spirit. When I wake up on Sunday mornings, I'm already doing relational prayer so that when I get here, I'm ready for corporate prayer because when we gather together, there's power. There's power. Amen. We've got to be ready. So corporate prayer does, kingdom corporate prayer starts at 10. Amen. Pre-service relational prayer starts before that. And if you come later on, which I pray you don't come later, but you come on time, you got to be ready, okay? When you come in and the the leader is already praying, you pray in the Holy Ghost. When you're in your car, if you haven't repented, you repent. You cast your cares. What is preparing your heart? You repent. God, I'm sorry for all my sins, everything I have done. Amen. You know, I, I give it to you so that you have the breastplate of righteousness so you don't have any heaviness of any unrepented sin. Amen. And we know that God quickly forgives, amen, if you sincerely repent. And then I also cast my cares because when we come here, we got to be a surrendered vessel. You're not a surrendered vessel if you're fearful, if you're worried, if you're thinking of other things that you need to do. That's not a surrendered vessel. You can't hear the voice of God clearly when he preaches. We got to be ready, amen. And so when we do that, amen, you so... Get ready, okay? And I know we haven't really taught this, but when you enter those church doors, okay, if we're still, if it's before 10 o'clock, yeah, you could, you could join in relational prayer. That's okay, preparing your heart. But if it's 10, be ready, because we might be warring in the spirit, amen? amen? We need to pray more the prayer of authority. That is when God releases things in our city amen. through corporate prayer together when it sounds like a warring prayer okay we need to be re- because we need to that more often pastor right 
We need to do it more often. Our bishop said, if you could do it every service. I know we're not ready there. But I want us to get ready wherein God can do more things in the spirit. We don't have, we don't come to church just to enjoy the presence of God. Yeah, we are enjoying it, right? That's a bonus. Okay, but we come here for the expansion of his kingdom, amen, for the souls, for the souls, okay? But as we do that, he takes care of the body. We do minister to each other, and those deacons, I release you to minister. You get your fill at home, okay? In your daily prayer, you get your fill so that when you come in the house of God, you can minister. Because we need the fivefold ministry to perfect the saints. What is a fivefold ministry? The apostles that have the vision for outward growth, amen? The pastors to carry. Most of you have that gift of pastoring, okay? That is caring for souls, amen? Prophets, amen, that have the seer ministry, that have visions that will confirm the will of God, amen? You have, have those gifts of teachers, amen? You, we, we, we need the operation of all these gifts in the body. So when we come in the house of God, it's not for us to feel good anymore, Pastor. You will feel good. When you surrender your will to God, when we're gathered to, you will feel good, you will. But that is not our purpose. Our purpose is to expand the kingdom of God as a body, as an army, like the military, amen? That's why we train, that's why we pray. It's a higher level. And I would say most of you, all of you, you're ready. Pastor, can you say that? All of you are ready. I know some of you just been here for a few few months or a few years, but you're ready. You're ready. You just need to practice it. So we pray what? Every day, right? Every day. No matter what your work hours are. I love, like what Sister Keisha says. I ask her, what is your prayer time? Because she's in the nursing field, right? And then there's... The hours are not always the same. Sometimes it's nighttime, like early morning. But she says, I pray when I wake up. And, and I trust that's enough time <laughs> that you're giving. Amen. So every day, why we pray, we pray to get our hearts ready. Amen. Re- relational prayer. But we, all, we also do kingdom prayer. Right? The military also fight, you know, if needed, you know, one at a time. Right? one against one enemy, right? But when we're corporate together, there's more power that's released as the army of God. Amen. We got to be ready. So when you come in those doors, okay, if it's new people, that's okay. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them, okay? Our goal, amen, our goal is to be strong in the body through the power of God. I'm giving you meat. You ready to step up? You pray at home every day, every day. If you haven't done that, you gotta do that. It's for your soul, it's not for mine. It's for you. It's for you, it's an everyday thing, not a once a week thing, an everyday thing. Because that's how you get a relationship with God, amen? But when you come to church as a body, come at 10 in the morning, be ready for corporate prayer ministering to others, ministering for the souls. And don't worry, there's still ministry in the body if there are needs, like like today, like like a while ago, what God was ministering through the Spirit, their needs, and there may be those that will pray for one another. God could still do that because it's for the perfecting of the saints. So if you need ministry, you're in the right place. But I'm just giving, pushing you a little to be ready to minister, amen? Go higher ground. Do you receive that in Jesus' name? All right. Let's just raise our hands to God in the name of Jesus. I just want us to surrender our will to God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray covering, oh God, and revelation of the spirit of unity upon your body, oh God. In the name of Jesus, that we become as one, oh God. Because you are one God. You have one name, oh God. You have one body, oh God. We trust in you, oh God. We yield to you today. In the name of Jesus, let him give him glory. Give him the glory today. In the name of Jesus. Yoro koi kasiara. Yoro koi.
I'm just going to feel it out. Does anybody have a word? If, you're not, if you don't have a word, that's okay. Does anybody have a word that God's giving you to share? I'm looking at my prophet. He's shaking his head. No? All right. Okay. All right. Praise God. You may be seated. Oh, no. Actually. Okay. Go ahead. I was, I was feeling this um, as Sister Lachika was speaking, and I don't know if you, you feel the flow in this maybe after. We'll see how God wants to do this. But I felt strongly in my spirit that as we began to pray, he was releasing deliverance. And the word finances is coming to my spirit right now. And so that little bit when we began to pray, I believe the Lord was rebuking the devourer over people's finances. Not, not just spiritual deliverance that he was releasing, but he was releasing financial deliverance. And so I don't know if that is for anybody here, but I believe the Holy Ghost is saying that he is rebuking the devourer over someone's finances this morning. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. He's been doing that financial provision, and he's also been doing emotional healing. I feel that. And there's spiritual deliverance in Jesus' name. All right, you may be seated. I'm just going to do a few announcements. But there's, there's one cool thing that as I was listening to Bishop Dobbs one day, and he said three, three words with the letter P. And I just want to share it with you because it's encouraging that God protects, amen? God protects, God provides, and God gives us promises. So when you pray, think about those three things. As I started, when I pray like, thank you, Lord, for your protection, amen? When we're traveling, when we're we're on our road, when our kids are traveling, amen? I say, Lord, I claim your protection, amen? He provides. And some of you, you're going to feel that freedom where you're not going to be dependent on your jobs anymore. Amen. You're going to see that miraculous provision. Why? Because he's coming. The Lord is coming soon. And for us to be busy in the harvest, we can't be tied to our jobs. Be ready. Be ready. Amen. So he, I thank him, and I always thank him, Lord, thank you for provision, for rebuking the devourer, oh God, for your blessing, amen, and he's faithful, amen. And and I know, Pastor, you've, you probably just want to share your testimony, but anyway, just thank God for his blessing over my family as well. But is that okay if I share it? Well, um, my, my husband's right secular job, amen. And God just, you know, gave him a raise like a few months ago. And then, but, you know, he, when he feels it's time for another blessing, he's not shy. So he told me that he's going to ask his boss for another increase, a raise in his salary, right? He, he said. And I, you know what I said? Honey, you just asked for one. You just got one. No, I said, no, don't do that. You know, we're... we're yeah, you know, I felt like it's, it's too much. But the Lord had a different agenda. He was going to ask his boss last Monday or two Mondays ago. And Sunday he received an email from the boss and says, Noy, I'm giving you a raise. <laughs> his spirit felt it. I'm sorry, I apologize. I didn't. But God is faithful. He knows the needs. So he protects. He protects physically and emotionally and spiritually. Amen. He provides according to his. These are all according to his will. Amen. And he has promises. When I pray, I proclaim the promises. And I proclaim those promises. Amen. Of harvest 
and revival, the Buena Park Church. Amen. I'm so excited. When I woke up, I told my husband, I'm so excited. God's doing great things, and he's already started things in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, and I thank you for your faithfulness. I love you all. You guys are, are great. Thank you for celebrating with us Father's Day. Amen. As we're honoring our fathers. And I just, I just thank God as we're together as a body, as a family. Amen. We need one another. We need one another. And I, I love you all in Jesus' name. And do you have your July calendar? If not, I want to ask the uh, ushers or the deacons to help out. Who doesn't have a calendar? Raise your hand. All right. I think everybody's covered. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And, um, well, for this week, we do have our prayer service. Amen. And we're going to learn more about, amen, corporate prayer, prayer of authority. I, I hope we cover that as well. And all about prayer is when, when you come in the house of God, you learn how to pray as a body. Amen. And we also have youth. Um, they call it summer revival. That's this Friday and Saturday. Any questions on that? See Sister Dana. Amen. And then for July, we have our... Um, connect groups and our first connect group is San Clemente amen and um, we all and I want to say because a lot of our Marines attend San Clemente cover our Marines in prayer amen and um, brother Edwin right he's he's out right now and and brother Luke is on vacation but cover cover them in prayer and cover the Marines that are not here that need to be here as well in Jesus name and thank you Thank you, Jess, for your faithfulness. Amen. We pray for you every day. The ministry over the Marines. Amen. That is God's will. I believe God's given us Camp Pendleton in Jesus' name to occupy in the spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. So San Clemente and then, of course, the other connect groups you, you see up there. Now, I also want to say, do, do you see in your calendar there's July 14 and July 21 um, is... If you see in the calendar, it says, it says, these are two Fridays. It says, sorry, I'm not wearing my glasses. Host or join a new Bible study. Okay. July 14, that's a Friday. And July 21, it says host or join a new Bible study. If you're not in a connect group meeting, if you're not actively involved, we felt this in the Holy Ghost to encourage you to set up your home, amen, for a, even just a one-time Bible study, if you want to call it connect group meeting, if it's a connect group meeting, we use the format that pastor writes, okay, so, so that's, and that's available, okay, so I want you to pray, amen, pray, and I already have a few that said, I want to do one, and we can have multiple, Amen. And let's say that Friday does We chose those two Fridays because it's a popular day for most of the Connect Group meetings. They want to do a Friday. So I figure if you want to start one, Friday is a good, a good day to do one. And it doesn't have to be like a commitment every Friday or every once a month. But we just want you to try it out. Okay. It could be for your neighbors. It could be for one neighbor. Amen. And then we're also here, even though like me, myself, my children have our own connect group. We can join you. Amen. Brother Paul can join you to help you out as well to support it. Amen. But we got to pray because we want new souls. Amen. We want new souls in our neighborhood to come. Or even if they're not part of your neighborhood and you're inviting them, hey, you want to come to our house, have dinner, and then we'll have like a, a nice Bible study. Amen. Whatever you want to call it. So start praying. That's July 14 or 21. Or if there's another day you prefer that you're available Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday, you could do that as well. But we just set those two dates. Amen. We opened it up. We didn't schedule any connect group meetings so that you can have yours. But you're not, you don't have to do it that day if you have another day. Amen. Like, like Sister Ella, if they want to come another Tuesday, different Bible study group. Amen. I release you in Jesus' name, amen? Because a lot of Sister Ella's co-workers, amen? There's a harvest there, amen? There's a harvest of Filipino souls there in Jesus' name. So, and Sister Lorraine, if you want to open your house, or, hey, if you want to, if us neighbor ladies want to team up, we'll do something, amen? We do a ladies group in our neighborhood, amen? So start praying. 
wherever you're living at, if you want to do it in your house, or, or if you want to join somebody else's group, if you're not involved, that's what pastor wants us to do. If you're not involved, act, when I say actively involved, you may have been involved before, actively involved. If you're not actively involved in a connect meeting, July is your time, amen, to change that. Okay, to be involved. And you might want to continue to doing it if you open your home, you know, but keep in prayer that. Amen. Am I, did I make sense? All right. So cover that in prayer because God has a harvest of souls. People you know. People you know because that's how he works. Amen. In Jesus' name. So, um, all right. And, uh, Okay, and then you also have that upcoming events in the bottom of the calendar. But anyway, we're going to have a great time of the Holy Ghost and our regular Wednesday services as well in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everyone. Gloria a Dios. Amen. Paz de Cristo, hermano y hermanas. Hallelujah. How many of you like to celebrate? You know, you don't even realize, but you celebrate every day. When you worship God, you celebrate. When you give Him glory, you celebrate. When you become parents, you have a newborn, you celebrate. And that happens in the physical and the spiritual realm. Amen. Praise God. You know, the first King 8 says, At that time, Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the tribal head, heads, all the ancestral leaders of the Israelites before him at Jerusalem in order to bring the Ark of the, Lord of, Ark of the Lord's covenant from the city of David. That is in Zion. So all the men of Israel assembled in the presence of King Solomon in the seventh month, the month of Ethanim, at the festival. What was the festival? Because they were dedicating the temple of the Lord. So Solomon prayed. The Lord said that he would dwell in thick darkness. I have indeed built an exalted temple for you, a place for your dwelling forever. Now, when God gave us this building, it was all his doing. See, Solomon built the temple for God's glory. God gave us this building for his glory so that souls can be saved. Amen. So we are going to celebrate the 20th anniversary of this church. And it's all because God has let that happen. Amen? You know, the word celebrate in NIV is mentioned about 83 times, which means God's love to celebrate. When one person is baptized in Jesus' name, there's a joy in heaven. That means there's a celebration going on. When God laid the foundation of the earth, the Bible says the sons of God rejoiced. The angels, which means angels were present at the creation so God loves rejoicing God loves celebration so we are going to celebrate the 20th anniversary of this church on August 20th how many of you are going to remember that August 20th so we are also collecting because we want to be a blessing to the Lachikas because they have put their heart and their soul in this ministry. Amen. Maybe we'll send them to the Swiss Alps for skiing. But they don't ski, so that's out of the question. But praise God, you know, I am so glad that they were here when I came to this church. And it has been a tremendous blessing because it is God who has sent each and every one of us here. Amen. And we need we need to let that sink in that, that God sent you here for the purpose and a reason not to sit idle but to do things for him and for his glory 
and he gives us the shepherds. So thank you, Pastor, Sister Lachika, Dana, and Dylan for all that you do. And we are looking forward to celebrating what God is going to do. Now that takes me into my next point. We are going to celebrate something else. See, when you give to the Lord, you are giving worship to the Lord. Giving is a worship. So we are going to celebrate right now in giving to the Lord. Amen. So as we bring our tithes and offerings right now, I want you to rejoice and bring it with the gladness of heart and let the Lord know, Lord, I'm giving this to you. I'm not giving it to anyone else, but it is for you and your glory. And the way you bless Solomon and the way you bless the temple of Israel, you are going to bless this church. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that God good this morning? And I bless all of you for being faithful to the house of God. There's something to be said and commended for being faithful to the house of God. And the consistency that you have, you may not see it right away, but there are blessings to that and God sees it God sees it would you just stand with me right now and would you just lift up your hands would you worship him would you worship him from your heart would you worship Him with all of your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength? We give everything to you, Father. In Jesus' name, God gave me a word this morning. And today we're going to talk about His will. And you want to do the will of God. You want to do the will of God. Matthew 28, 19, a very familiar verse to a lot of us. The Bible says to go, therefore. Therefore is a conclusion to what has been said. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Turn to somebody and tell them you should be teaching. Come on. Tell somebody you should be teaching notice the verse doesn't say go ye pastors it doesn't say go ye leaders it's everybody I always say that if you could read you can teach you could share at least a point or two or three or four of what you have heard every Sunday every Wednesday the connect groups you could teach and he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father. What's the name of the Father? What's the name of the Son? In the name of the Holy Ghost. And he says, verse 20, teaching them. Notice he repeats the word again in verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And if you do that, if you go teach, here's the promise. Because when God tells you to do something, there's always empowerment. There's blessings. When you do His will, there's, there's provisions, like Sister Lachika said. There's protection. There's promises. Here's what it says. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in the house. I believe it is the will of God for us to teach. Now you could deduct from this scripture that if you don't go, if you don't teach. Are you with me? Right? You know, most people say, you know, God, God's just going to do 
You know, he's unconditional. Yeah, his love is. But he doesn't condone things. He still loves you. This is conditional. He promises to those that he will be with them. Always. Even to the end of the age. The word amen says, let it be so. It also means, it is so. Hallelujah. How many of you are going to find somebody to teach? How many of you going to pray this week, Father, lead me to a hungry person, a hungry soul, even this afternoon, in Jesus' name, so I could teach the Word of God. You know, if you find just someone to share the Word, because the Word, the Bible says, it's, it's living water. It's rivers of water. And stagnant water doesn't give life. Man, it become it has algae and all sorts of junk, right? Because because movement is nature's filtration system. It brings freshness, and so God's spirit is moving. And when you begin to teach, there's a replenishment of the presence of God and the spirit of God, and you're renewed every day. You're renewed every morning, and so whenever you feel down, don't stay down. Find, let the river flow out of you. Teach somebody. Well, pastor, I don't. I, I can't teach something. You know, point by point. You share what God has done for you. You share a nugget you heard on a Sunday or a Wednesday or during prayer time. In fact, all of the messages that God gives me is through prayer. It just begins to marinate. I mean, like marinate. You know, it, it tastes good when it's marinated, right? Just marinate in your spirit. And don't you don't rely on you know a script to perform. It just it's there as a guide, but the Rhema comes and you just speak it. And you learn together as you read the word, and God begins to show you things you've never heard before. Because the word of God is always fresh. It's fresh bread, fresh manna, fresh water. Hallelujah. I feel the freshness of the Holy Ghost in the house. Could you just worship Him right now? And just thank Him in advance for what He's going to do this week. How He's going to use you. How He's going to give you freshness and newness in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to do His will. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will he that doeth the ETH of the old English King James means a continual doing right because this is a this is enduring till the end this is not a Sunday thing or a Wednesday thing or a connect group thing it's it's an everyday it's a relationship you don't talk to your husband, your wife, your children just on Wednesdays and Sundays, right? I hope not. Because if you do, you won't have one in a short period of time. So you interact with them every day, all the time. Text messages, email, whatever it would be. But you're connected. And so the Lord says that if you continually do my will, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. How many you want to make it? You've made up your mind. Whatever comes my way, be it good, bad, or indifferent, I'm not giving up. I'm not trading the body of Christ. It is not for sale. My fellowship with the believers, with the body of Christ, is not for sale to the highest bidder, the highest event, the person that may come along. No, I made up my mind. I'm going to the house of God. I'm going to fellowship with the body of Christ because that's where the blood flows. And I'm going to endure to the end. I'm going to do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. As God reveals His will to us, there's got to be a desire to keep doing His will. And if you have that desire, God's going to give you the empowerment to do His will. Let me dispel the false notion right at the beginning here that doing the will of God is not enjoyable. 
Many people think that, well, if you become a Christian, I can't do this and I can't do that. Uh, and, you know, life will not be enjoyable. That's a lie. I said that's a lie. Doing the will of God has so many benefits in Jesus' name. Doing the will of God gives you joy, gives you peace. Doing the will of God lifts you to higher places that you cannot get anywhere else. It's not legalistic. See, people who say that doing the will of God is restrictive, they really haven't experienced the depth of peace. This world will look for peace. God is stirring up the world where they will look for peace. If you're keeping up at all what's happening prophetically through social events, things are happening in Russia. They had a coup. Amen. If you don't know about that. God is stirring up because the Antichrist, the Bible says, will be a man of peace. And so the world will get so chaotic, it's preparing it for this Antichrist, claiming to be Christ. And he will offer peace, especially in the Middle East. Because whatever happens in the Middle East, it affects the whole nations. It affects the whole world world but you can have peace right now i said you could have peace not an absence of trials not an absence of storm that's happiness happiness is based on happenstance amen and if you base your peace on happiness you you go up you go down depending on if there's something happening or not it affects your emotions you're weakest in your emotional state you are the most weakest state if you're emotional. You got to regulate your emotions. How do I do that, Pastor? Get a good night's sleep. That's a practical way. Amen? And, and when some things bother you, you cast your cares upon the Lord. How many of you believe he cares for you? He cares for you. Everything that matters to you. How do I do that? You pray. You said, Father, here's what I'm facing with. You know this, Lord. Uh, you said I should seek your kingdom first. Uh, so I trust you're going to provide. Uh, I trust you're going to protect. Uh, and I trust you're going to make me the promises you've given me. It's going to happen. Uh, how many believe the promises are going to happen? In fact, they are happening right now in Jesus' name. And we like new things, right? Everybody likes new things. The Bible says that his mercy is new every morning. So if you made a mistake last night, guess what? Today's a brand new day. I said today is a brand new day. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. And when you seek his will, he's going to empower you to do his will. Hallelujah. In fact, when you have peace... Knowing you are in the will of God. When hardships happen, you're not going to quit. Because you're in the will of God. When trials happen, you're not going to run because you're in the will of God. Amen? In fact, when we become uh, in tune with the will of God, everything else doesn't matter anymore. It's just His will. That matters. Just his will. And when you're in the will of God, you won't quit on your marriage. Because you knew God gave you that spouse. Oh, they're not perfect and so are you. Hello? Why don't you put that stress on yourself to perform that high standard that you have? Why don't you do that first? Because here's the truth. If you do that first, it doesn't matter what everybody else does. You'll have peace. You'll have joy. You'll have righteousness. And in fact, it will affect other people around you. Because everybody's attracted to somebody that has peace inside. They're just happy. Not because there's nothing wrong, but because they have joy in the Lord. That's how churches are birthed. Of people that God sends and they begin to go through the hardships and, 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 and everything that 
entails starting a church. We're, we're going up into our 20th anniversary in August. Uh, I'll never forget how old the church is because it's as old as my daughter. When we started a church, she was a newborn. About three months, four months maybe. And uh, no, so it's in August. So you got March, April, May, June, July, August. Five months old. She was in a carrier. And she went everywhere with us. Amen. Praise God. And now we've got a granddaughter work that's going to have service this afternoon at 3.30 p.m. I pray some of you will be able to do that. There's exciting things. But, but peace gives you perseverance. It gives you tenacity. Knowing you're in the will of God. So today I want us to, to dig a little deeper. We'll preach a little bit. We'll teach a little bit. Amen. I don't want to just preach and lift, you know, your spirits up, although I do want that. But I don't want us to go deep in the Word of God. Every time, there's got to be a revelation. Amen. If you want preaching, there's all kinds of stuff. As long as it's apostolic, you go YouTube. We just had a great camp meeting. All of you that were able to go, wasn't that awesome? Amen. But doing the will of God is not restrictive. Doing the will of God brings righteousness, peace, and freedom. Freedom. Freedom is not because you're restricted. Freedom comes from laws. Did you know that? You know, someone say, well, if I'm, if I'm be free, I'm allowed, I should be allowed to do anything. No, that's not freedom. That's chaos. Could you imagine if there's no traffic laws? You know, you just go through stop. There's no stop signs. There's no nothing. You just blow through it. I've been in third world countries that are like that. It's chaotic. It's like, you know, you don't know if you're going to survive just going from point A to point B. Amen. But the word of God, the will of God brings freedom. Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit or in the Holy Ghost. Oh, temporary pleasures, eating, drinking. There's pleasure and sin for a, for a season. But that doesn't really bring freedom. In fact, the more you do it, the more in bondage you become. The more it just drains you. It, it, then, then you're like, well, what's going on? You know, I, I don't feel God anymore. And God's forsaken me. And, you know, we, we tend to blame a lot of things on God or on the devil when it's actually us. Amen? Well, I don't know. I wasn't really ministered, but what pastor preached? Well, my God, pray through. Not my fault. <laughs> I was blessed. I don't know about you. I made up my mind, whoever's ministering, singing, or something's happening, I'm going to connect with the presence of God. I'm going to have joy. I'm going to have peace. And the foundation is righteousness, not because of what I've done, but because he's, he, is, he is righteous. And his righteous spirit dwells in me. Amen. So every time I make a mistake, I repent. I ask God for his forgiveness. And I believe he forgives me because that's his will. And doing the will of God is a choice. Amen. You know, we'll, 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 we'll say stuff like, well, you know, I... Life just happened this last week, and I've never really had the chance to pray. And, you know, I, and it's just, you know, it's, how many you could be honest, it's, it's so easy to fall into the trap of not praying, right? And we get so many, you know, excuses, and, and, and pardon me, because we have to call it as it is, because it is excuses, right? Because whatever's priority or important to you and I, we will make it happen, Right? Like eating. Did you ever say, well, you know what? Man, I was just so busy. I didn't eat for a week. Or two weeks. For the looks of all of us, yeah, we haven't missed a meal or two or three or four. Now, you've got to ask yourself the question because really that itself will be a testimony against us on Judgment Day. Because that every day 
It just talks about priorities. It's priorities. But Jesus is the bread of life. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When your diet begins to change in your spirit uh, and you're not satisfied with just a little 15 minute prayer and you want to dig deep into the wells of salvation and you want to sit at the feet of Jesus and get revelation from him uh, and being directed by him because if you're in his will, it's the safest place to be in. There's no worry there. There's no worry. There's no fear there. It's full of love. It's full of revelation, <laughs> hallelujah, but it is a choice. I choose to talk to him. I choose to spend time with him. I choose him. How many of you want to choose him? How many of you have chosen him? How many of you made up your mind? You've chosen the Lord in Jesus' name. <laughs> now here's an amazing choice, Moses in Hebrews eleven twenty four 24, by faith, because you've got to have faith to choose. Why do you pray? Because God answers prayer. People that don't pray, they don't believe God answers prayer. They're just clocking in, like going to work, you know, put in the time. But I, I've got a lot of answered prayers. How about you? I mean, really, how about you? Are, are your prayers answered? Or, or is it a drudgery? See, if your prayers are not answered, you'll stop praying. But if you've got some track record with him, if you've got and pursued some of his will for your life, amen, and you may not do it 100% perfectly, but you've got some track record and say, you know what, God does hear prayer. God does answer prayer. And so by faith, the Bible says when he, Moses, became of age, and in other words, when he was, he came to himself and he was confronted with a choice. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. It was a choice. Now, now, now think with me. The choice was living in a palace or being like the Jews are slaves. They're whipped. They're in bondage. And he said, I'll choose that. Now think with me for a moment. That's a choice that he's making. You know, it's not like downsizing from a five-bedroom home to a three-bedroom. You know, it's not like driving a, a, a BMW. I was going to say a Mercedes, but I'm going to pick up Brother John. A BMW to a Peugeot. <laughs> now you're talking about being in a palace to being homeless and in fear of his life of being killed. That was the choice. How many of you are going to pray and say, God, when it comes time for me to make that choice, uh, I've got to make that choice. I'm believing you're going to empower me to make that choice right now, oh God. And all of this that we're going through, God is preparing us because some of us, in fact, probably most of us are going to live through where you are going to make a choice where your life is going to be in danger doing the will of God. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Because that's coming. In fact, it's already here. And you got to make a choice. That's why I commend you for being here today. Because this is just a small exercise of being committed, making that choice. Some are not here. It's so, uh, it grieves my soul sometimes. Some are just so easy to, to sell the body of Christ to anything and anyone that comes along in their life. You know, if it's convenient, I'll come. If my job will allow me, I'll come. You know what? That kind of faith will not save you. You better make up your mind. I'm preaching to you the truth. We're digging deep into the word of God. We are in that season. Amen. The political system and all the interest groups are becoming more militant. And COVID was just a shot over the bow of the church. To see if people really believe in the love of God. That God will protect them. Amen. And sadly most of us. Were just afraid. You, well I can't come because. We might die. Oh, my God if you die. If you got a relationship with him. You're going to go to heaven. Unless you don't really believe you're going. Then you should be afraid. 
right? You should mask up, you know? Not just a mask like the N95. I'm talking about a painter's mask that has an oxygen in the back. <laughs> Amen. See, the apostles went through that. They were in fear for their life. And hearing the voice of God, doing the will of the Father, guided them, protected them. Until the time that the Lord said, you're ready. You're ready to come home, son. You're ready to come home, daughter. Amen. And whatever avenue or vehicle God's going to use, amen, be it to your liking or not, as long as you go to heaven, I think that'll be all right with us. Amen. As long as we make it. Isn't that all right? If you get hit by a semi-truck going. Man, I just lost a lot of you. Well, that's a little morbid, Pastor. Well, I don't know. You know, the Lord told most of the disciples, how are they going to die? You know, he says, you're going to be hated by all men for my name's sake. That's not happening right now, right? But it will happen. Brother Luke actually texted me this, yesterday, I think it was. He said, Pastor, I think you're going to get a chuckle of this. The uh, transgendered movement is threatening to bomb Target for pulling their merchandise. And I said, well, yeah, uh, the only bad thing about that, at some point, that's going to be directed to the church. And while Target might have some security, and the politicians have security, but most churches don't. I mean, as far as, you know, guards, right? You don't see guards. Well, there's an angel of the Lord. Amen. The Bible promises that if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm you. That's not just limited to drinking, right? Praise God. Why do we thank God right now? Why do you just thank God? Thank God for his will. Thank God for his word. Thank God for his plans for your life. Thank God for your family. Thank God where you've been, uh, where you are today, and where you're going. Thank God in everything. Give thanks for it is the will of God concerning you. Sometimes we forget that word. The word says, thank God, give thanks in everything, for it's the will of God concerning you. What does that mean? If I'm sick, I'm going to thank God? No. But you're thanking God for the outcome. Amen? You, you know, you don't twist that scripture. You think I'm going, to, I'm going to thank God for COVID? Yeah, if it brings you to a place higher in God. Amen? Praise God. Next verse, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. To suffer. We should not be afraid to suffer. Amen. I think at some point I'm going to take the, the foam out of the chairs and, and as we sit there, we suffer. You know, it's it's hard for us in North America because we're so blessed financially. And, and I'm afraid that we might be lacking in, in in the willingness to suffer with him. Because, you know, we got air conditioning. There was hardly any traffic. Actually, no traffic coming over here. You know, you were not afraid for your life. You, you had food. In fact, you have too much food. You had coffee. Some of you got too much coffee. I mean, we're just blessed. Right? And, and it'd be good to fast for a little bit because it makes your body suffer. It crucifies the flesh. Why did he suffer? Because he's looking for God that God has a reward. Amen? Verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. See, God is invisible. And the only reason why you know He is real, it's in your prayer time. It's in your communication with Him that He hears. He has ears to hear and eyes to see and, and arms that is not short that He could not reach. And so you build this relationship with God that you know is real. Is He real to you? I mean, really, is He real? Are you convinced he exists? Are you convinced he is alive? Are you convinced he loves you? Or has that been lost in your spirit somehow that, you know, 
Maybe he's not. Maybe we're just imagining this thing. No, he's real. You, you and I have experienced so much to know. To know 100% that he is real. He is alive. And not only that, he is in total control of everything. Somebody lift up your hands to him. Hallelujah. Can you sense him? Can you sense the reality of the presence of God, the spirit of God? Uh, unless you sense him, would you ask him, Father, let me feel that peace uh, that he's talking about, the preacher's talking about. Uh, as you lift up your hands, can you begin to pray and say, let me, let me have a little bit of that joy that the preacher's talking about. Uh, let me have that righteousness, the robe uh, of righteousness that he's talking about because that brings uh, an unending source of joy. It brings an unending source of peace. Hallelujah. Praise God. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. See, when God smites, smote Egypt, as he will smite Egypt, which represents the world system, he'll smite it again. And that time every family was visited with death. That's why I'm telling you that COVID was just a shot over the bow. It's going to happen again. Why? Is because God's cruel? No, because God loves the world so much. For God so loved the world that he's willing to do anything and everything to shake them off of their stupor, of their drunkenness, to realize their need of God. And just as they need God, how many you realize you need God? Amen. I said you need God. Amen. Every day you need God. Every single moment you need God. That's why you coming to the house of the Lord just reinforces in your spirit, I need you, Lord. I can't go by a week or a month without coming together and the flow of the Holy Ghost upon his body because his body is the apple of his eye. You're the apple of his eye. He died for you. He said, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as dry, as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. See, there's a highway that God has chosen for us to travel upon. And you won't drown here. You won't drown doing the will of God. Hallelujah. You won't drown doing the will of God. In the name of Jesus. Somebody just believe that right now. You won't drown doing the will of the Lord. There's peace. It's not restrictive. It's not legalistic. There's righteousness built into it. There's joy built into it. There's peace built into the will of God. Oh, your flesh may not like it, but let your outward man perish. Let it die daily. And let the inner man be renewed, be strengthened day by day, the apostle said. And for something to be alive in your life, you got to feed it. Just like you're alive because you eat. you got to feed the inner man. If you look at your inner man, is it strong or is it malnourished? Only you and God really know that. It comes by steady diet. You see, a lot of the ailments that we have could really be solved by what we eat or don't eat. Right? Oh, but it's so hard. I know that flaming hot Cheetos. But you know, after you build up your appetite and change it, your body actually starts liking it. I haven't eaten rice, or at least not a lot of it, in many months now. I eat cauliflower rice. And for a Filipino, man, that's a big thing. I mean, we grew up eating rice breakfast, lunch, dinner. And in between. I mean, it's... You know, it, it's like eating potatoes or mashed potatoes. But as soon as I change it and I go, you know what, it is not so bad. You know, I had to convince myself, this is not so bad. It's disgusting. You know, you get a food processor, you put cauliflower there, and you pretend in your mind, this is rice and this is good. No, it's not. It's disgusting. 
But you know, after a while, like, you know what? This is not too bad. Why? Because you're looking at the benefits. You're looking at the reward. You see, when you do the will of God, there's a reward not only in heaven, but right now. There's promises right now. There's, there's blessings right at this very moment. God protects you. You're protected from health diseases. You're protected from, from depression and all kinds of stuff by just being in his will. John 14, 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, this is a good scripture in the King James because we all know what a comforter is, right? Because you have one. I mean, you're not using it now, but you will be at some point when winter time. But isn't it nice, to, you know, when it's kind of cool and maybe like, you know, thank God for Southern California around, you know, 12 to 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., 5 a.m., you could pull that comforter, right, and just make sure your feet doesn't stick out, you know, and, and you just pull that over and like, oh, it's, I could feel it right now. <laughs> Praise God. Sister and Chica and I bought a, a, a pillow, a purple pillow, which is ironically white. Uh, inside is purple. I trust them. Amen. And it's so good to just sleep on it. That's what the Holy Ghost is being described at. When you're going through uncomfortable times, you could pull up the Spirit of God. He just covers you. Gives you comfort in times of trials. It just gives you comfort when you're, when you're weak, when, when you're going through things. Don't run from the presence of God when you're going through tough times. Uh, don't run from the body of Christ uh, when you're going through tough times because it is here that the blood flows. It is here that God has obligated himself to show up. That's why the scripture says where two or three are gathered together. In my name, there am I in the midst of them. So, can you feel the presence of God by yourself? Sure. But there's a multiplicity when you gather together. Did you feel it a little while ago when we were together and we began to sing? And it began to comfort your mind and your spirit. Hallelujah. See, look at this. He said, he'll send the comforter. So what's the comforter? The Bible says it's the Holy Ghost. And so what's the name of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit? It tells you right there. In my name. It comes in Jesus' name. Because he is holy. He's alone, he alone is the holy one. And he alone is a spirit. He is the Holy Spirit. And the name of the Holy Spirit is Jesus. That's why everybody was baptized in Jesus' name. What will it do? It will bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So it, it, it says that God has said things to you. That God has released his will in your life. That God through prayer has given you things that he has said. Has God said some things to you? Okay, there's a question. If you want to stay longer. <laughs> has God said something to you in prayer? And you say, you know what? That's from the Lord. You know, you ought to have something to write upon when you pray. Because it's faith that says, God's going to tell me something. God's going to do something. I'm going to receive rhema from God, a word from God. And I'm going to write it down. Because if you don't, you're not going to remember. Right? It says, he's going to remind you. Because we forget. Amen? What's your birthday? Somebody remembered it, right? But the older you get, you don't want to remind yourself of your birthday, isn't it, right? Because too many birthdays are detrimental to your health. Amen. But God's going to remind you and remind us. He said this in verse 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. And here's the effect. It's let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be 
afraid. See, the peace that comes from the world is an absence of war, an absence of trials, an absence of inflation. But the peace of God comes. Amen. Despite of things, despite of war, despite of trials, despite of the things that could make you afraid, but you will not. Why? Because the peace of God transcends that. It's beyond your thoughts. It's beyond your emotions. Hallelujah. That's why the apostles could die for the faith without being afraid. Stephen being stoned to death, he looked up. He said, I see a a picture. I see a vision of a son of man standing on the right hand of God. He's not afraid. He doesn't even feel the pain of the stones hitting him. How many of you want that kind of peace? Come on, how many of you really want that kind of peace? You could exercise that now. And God's going to give you an opportunity when trials come. Are you able to cast your care, the thing that matters to you, to him? Uh, you know, you desire to be used of God and to do his will. God's going to make a way for you. I said, God's going to make a way for you. Your job, your schedule is not going to be a hindrance for you. But you get to desire it. I said, you get to desire it. If you're comfortable in that, you know, not being able to come or, and I'm not knocking anybody, but because I've been there. But if you desire it, God could give you a schedule and God could give you a pay raise. In fact, God could give you something that's beyond what you expect. Hallelujah. See, I used to have an IT company that my wife owned because it was in, his, in, her, in her name. And, and you know how the blessing of the Lord came is because I, Brother Rodriguez, who's probably going to come and preach the, the anniversary service for us on the August 20th. So pray for him. He asked a question on a NAM North American Missions Board that was in a panel that was answering questions. And he asked me in front of people, what's my plan to go full-time in the ministry now that's a personal question you don't ask that in front of people he said what are your plans i go that's none of your business of course i didn't say that right i don't know i can't remember what i said i made something up i lied you know make it sound good but i said in my mind you know buddy after this you and i are gonna have a talk (laughs) i'm talking to you you know what it did that started a friendship that spans many years now. Strong friendship, strong bond. Hallelujah. I thank God. I thank God. But see, sometimes God will release things in your life that you think it's a negative when in fact it's something that you should overcome and not be afraid. Because what happened on that Monday, my boss was a good friend of mine. He's the director of the trust funds. I was their IT administrator. Very early in the morning, he goes, he calls me Horacio because that's my legal name. So if you want to make a check, H-O-R-A-C-I-O. It's Horacio. Don't pronounce the H in Spanish. You don't pronounce the H. It's Horacio La Chica Junior. Actually, in fact, let me back up. It's Horacio Narboneta La Chica Junior. That's what, you buy some vowels to pronounce my name. Amen. You know what happened on Monday? The boss goes, hey, do you want to go to Starbucks? I go, sure. So in El Monte, that's where I I used to drive. You know, it's it's far. There's Longo Toyota by, uh, and it's not Santa Anita, Peck Road. I know what I'm talking about. It's outside of your area. You don't go to the hood. (laughs) Amen. But we go to Longo Toyota. Longo Toyota has its own AAA. It's It's got McDonald's. It's got... I mean, it's like a city. It's huge. If you ever want to buy a Toyota, well, yeah, maybe not. You know, I'm not paid for advertising them. <laughs> I'm kidding. But you, so there's a Starbucks there. So we go, we drink, you know, we talk, talk about a lot of things. And, and I, I could tell he's uncomfortable. And so, you know, I buy some pastries. He's paying. So I'm like, man, I'm, I'm spending. <laughs> and I get another drink. And I go by the fourth cup. I go, why are we here, man? (laughs) I got stuff to do. You're the boss. You can go home if you want. I got stuff to do. He goes, well, you know, I don't know how to tell this, but the 
the, uh, the board of directors told me to lay you off. He said, it's either me or, me or you. And, and he's, he's, he's teary-eyed. He, I mean, he's, he said, bro, I, I, I've not been able to sleep this weekend, and, 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 and um, I'm, I'm sorry, man. And he's, 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 he's emotionally affected by this because we're good friends. And I go, wow, all right. So I called my wife. I said, hey, are you sitting down? She goes, why? Well, I got some good news and bad news. Which one do you want first? And I think, I don't know if I said that or not. I'm just making this thing up. I can't remember. <laughs> but I did talk to her. But at some point, I got around to it, and I said, you know, I'm getting laid off. And she goes, you know what? Let me call you back. She hangs up. And I'm like, well, I guess we're in trouble now. You see, if it's just me, I, 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 I don't worry about finances. But I got to support my wife, my kids. You know, it puts a responsibility in you. If it's just me, man, I could fast. I, as long as I got a good shower, a bed, and a good sound system, I'm good. I don't worry. I, I, I'm not high maintenance. Well, kind of now, but, you know, that's because of my wife and my kids. But she called back later on. She goes, you know what? I crunched some numbers. Don't worry about it. We'll be fine. I'm like, Praise God. So I went to work. I, I work, you know. I work. I work still. I, I want to be a witness to them. That now because I'm being laid off, I'm like, you know what? Forget you. I'll let this computer crash. Praise God. I'll let this server unpatch. See if you appreciate me now, huh? <laughs> but I didn't do that. You know, I prepared them. I gave them all the keys, all the licenses, every, the map of the network. I printed it. I gave it to them. And I said, you know what? Thank you for allowing me to work for this company. I'm the only one that they laid off. They had a party for me. They had a party for me. In the conference room, they had food, uh, and they had me speak. He trusted me enough not to blast the company. You know, bless God, this thing is, uh, you know, is horrible to work for. And No, I didn't do that. But here's, here's what God, how God's good. This is what, when you're in the will of God, He gives you provisions that you cannot achieve by yourself. We were in a camp meeting. Wow. That's, that's, so it was around this time in 20, when was that? 20 something. Until we're old, can't remember stuff. But I got a phone call. It was three months now after I'm getting laid off. You know, we had some savings, so I see it as a vacation. See, it, 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 really, it really matters how you see things. You could see it as, oh my God. I don't have an income anymore. I can't, I can't feed Dana. You know, when she was young, she would not let me go to work. You know, and, 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 and it breaks your heart. Papa, don't go. And she doesn't do that anymore. But <laughs> he goes, Papa, don't go to work. I go, honey, I got to go. Why? Because I got to buy your milk. She goes, I'm not going to drink milk anymore. And then I go, well, what about your cookies? He goes, well, I'll share with Dylan. She didn't want to let go of her cookies. Milk, it's out the door. Amen. But cookies, no, I'm holding on to that. We know I got a phone call three months after. I was in the campground, in Orange County campground, in an RV. It's not camping. Sister Chica doesn't do camping. Amen. Thank God for that. I indulged that. He said, hey, bro, uh, would you come back and work for us? And I go, why? You know, kind of like Joseph, you kind of enjoy a little vengeance. I go, why? Well, we need you back. I go, why? Well, we, you know, there's stuff happening with the computer. Oh, now you realize I wasn't just sitting there doing nothing, huh? And then I began to pray. I didn't just jump and say, okay, I'll, I'll come work for you. You know, I, I pray. Because I want to find out the will of God. I want to be in the will of God. See, something happened. I knew that it was the Lord directing my steps. Nothing happens to you and I by accident. Amen? I said, nothing happens to you by accident. If you seek the will of God, even if you miss the will of God, God is so gracious. He is so kind to bring you aligned with his will. So I prayed, Lord, what do you want to do? And this thought came to my mind to start a company. And all the good names are taken up already for an IT company. So I Googled it up in the Secretary of State. The only thing I could come up with, Smart IT Works, LLC. 
I know it's a horrible name, but hey, it works. And my wife knows it. Thank you, Brother Johnny. At least somebody thought it was a good name. I thought it was great. I go, man, that's amazing. Smart IT works. I don't, but she does because it's her name. And would you believe it? I wrote that contract. I copied one of my friends who's a contractor, and I asked for the moon, thinking it's a negotiation piece. When they say, well, that's crazy. You're not going to get that. And, or you strike this out, this document. And I gave it to my friend who's the director, and, he, and he's about to sign it. I go, bro, you need to read that. He goes, no, I trust you. No, no, no. You need to read that. <laughs> no, I'll just, I go, man, you really need to read that, man. He goes, nah. He just signs it. Signs it. You know what he signed? I work one day a week of my choosing. If there's any uh, uh, very urgent stuff, it takes it, it, four hours to get it fixed. I get paid, I get paid $120 an hour. And anything more than that is double. It's $260 an hour. It's lawyer's price. Because I work for the king. Amen. And I earn more than people that work there for 40 hours a week. Just visiting them. One day. Only Jesus could do that. Only doing the will of God can do that. I could tell you story after story in the name of Jesus Christ. Not because of me, but because of his will. Not because of my own righteousness, but because of his name and his blood and just simply desiring, what do you want, Lord? What do you want me to do? You see, you need to make that a habit uh, every single day. You need to seek his will. What do you want, God? I'm your body. My body does not belong to me. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? I could give you story after story about financial blessing. It still happens today. In fact, I told Brother Rodriguez that word, uh, that question that I did not like, today I'm still reaping the benefits of that. Today I'm still reaping the benefits of that. Uh, amen. They gave me 25% of my salary back then in my 401k. Every year they deposited 25 of my salary into a 401k. And today, I work for another company. It still continues. Praise God. Somebody lift up your hands if you want to be blessed by doing the will of God. Somebody lift up your faith and begin to be mixed in with the will of God. Father, by the power of the word of God. Father, by the power of the word of God, uh, we have very little time, O oh Lord. Uh, we cannot devote it to the corporate world anymore. Father, by the power and the authority of the word of God. And the authority that is in the name Jesus, I loose God upon your people. Financial blessings, oh Lord, I loose it upon them, God, for their schedules and their time not to be spent in an office, but in you and for you and for your kingdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody receive it right now. It's available for you. It's available for you in Jesus' name. You see, I know God gave that to me so I could be transferred to other people. And that's already transferred to Brother David. He, he told me, and this is many months now, he, he doubled his salary. Everybody that will seek the will of God, he'll give you time and he'll give you the finances. To fund his kingdom to advance it. Somebody believe that right now. Somebody believe that right now. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Let me read this because it's so good. 1 John 4 18. There is no fear in love. Somebody say that. There is no fear in love. But perfect or mature love casts us out all fear it pushes it out because fear involves torment but he who fears has not been made perfect or matured in love but you can you can every time something attacks you you say you know what god loves me he loves me 
He's in love with me. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I'm here convinced he's in love with you. Uh, and that love is the most powerful force. Uh, don't you think God wants to bless you? Uh, don't you think God wants to protect you? Uh, don't you think he wants you to experience what he has? Uh, that you have access to the kingdom. Amen. Uh, he treats us as a good father. He said, Many of you being evil or human know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more your heavenly father? I want my kids to be blessed. In fact, they know that. Amen. In fact, this, this camp meeting, Dana sells her crochet, crochet by day. It's catchy. Not like Smart IT Works, LLC. This is it's nice. You know, crochet by day. It's like, this should be a song. Crochet by day. Something like that. I don't know. A jingle. But God sold all of her stuff. She made like $700. Some $700. Amen. And some of the time, she wasn't even there selling. I was the one selling. There was a line, and I go, where is she? I go, are you guys all waiting for her? Yeah. I go, just scan this thing, this Venmo, whatever it is, and, and pay. And many of them did that. God's amazing. How many are you going to expect your blessing? How many are you going to expect your blessing? You got to expect your blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. And verse 19 says, we love him because he first loved us. See, he chose you. You didn't choose him. He chose you. He saw something in you. He saw you, Brother Paul. He says, I want that guy. Get that guy. He told me, get that guy. He looked at all of you, Brother Johnny and Sister Grace. He says, I want that couple. In the name of Jesus. He looked at Guadalupe. Amen. He looked at his star daughters. I want them. He looked at Brother Jane. He I want them. And they've gone through some trials and they're still here. Because to them, the gospel is not for sale. To them, they have bought the truth and they're not going to sell out. It doesn't matter how hard it becomes. It doesn't matter how hard it gets or what God requires. We love you, Father. And just as you've given up your life for us, we'll give, us th give up this life so we could live for you. Hallelujah. See, most people fear, they fear running out of money. How many can we be honest? In fact, if you're young or younger and you're on your own, you're like, man, you know, got to build up some retirement. See, I've been poor. I've been poor to where we didn't have anything to eat. And I've been at the other side of the spectrum where we have, we have so much the, the hardest question of the day is, what are we going to do today? You get so bored of life and you say, is this it? Is this it without God? I didn't even know that God was already dealing with me. Is this it? You got everything in the, you're wondering, what are we going to do? And I go, man, I, I don't want this. I wanted to die. Not because I was depressed. I just want to check out. I'm, I'm done. I've lived. I'm good. And I was 17 years old. It was crazy. And God began to deal with me and somebody else. They brought me to an apostolic church and the rest is history. Amen. But God will bring you to places and you'll experience his love. You'll experience his peace, the depths. Oh, the depths of the joy of the love of God. See, the good thing about experiencing the depths of poverty is you're not afraid. I've been there. That's not that bad. You won't die. As long as you have God, God, got God. Now, if you don't have God and you're poor, you're just miserable. Amen? At least get God. You could be poor and still be happy and still be joyful. You could have all the riches and not have God. You'll still be miserable. If you don't believe that, just look over to Hollywood. They got millions of dollars. Some of them commit suicide because life has no meaning. Because only God gives meaning. And only his will endures to give you meaning. Something to look up towards. And something to rise up in the morning for. The will of God. If you all of a sudden had zero in your bank account. Would you still feel blessed? 
would you still be able to say, like Job, naked came I from my mother's womb, and naked will I return to the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. But blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll worship you. I'll worship you more. I'm going to have fellowship in my sufferings in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, I remember my pastor, Brother Koppel, he said, son, don't waste your sorrows. Anytime you go through something, you could use it. You you have two choices. Either you could be depressed and complain and even blame God, or you could have fellowship with him. You could get closer to him. You could hear his dimension of his voice in a deeper way through the fellowship of his suffering. The word fellowship means close intimacy where he begins to talk to you, when he begins to give you dreams that transcends your situation, and you say, this is worth it. This is worth it. Hallelujah. Because just because you're blessed doesn't mean God, blessed financially doesn't mean God has blessed you. Amen? The prosperity doctrine is a lie from hell. I said the prosperity doctrine is a lie from hell. Because if that's true, blessing equates, financial blessing equates the blessings of God. Then in 2 Corinthians eleven twenty seven, Paul, he said, In weariness and toil and sleeplessness, often in hunger and thirst and fasting, often in cold and nakedness. Seems like that's a hard life, don't you think? Seems like he can't sleep. You been there? Can't sleep? What would you do? Take melatonin. <laughs> what do you do? Sleeping aid. What do you do? NyQuil. Uh, coming to where you live now. Oh, we've done it. See, NyQuil only works for your first day. I've taken so much drugs in my life, the second day it just doesn't affect me. Right. Bourbon would be the next step. Whiskey or Jack, but I don't know them anymore. They're in the rear view mirror. They're so far behind, I don't even know them. Praise God. They have no allure. They look old and decrepit and they're hugging the commode and chucking. Up. The smell of alcohol makes me sick. Praise God. See, that's his goodness. That's the benefit of his will. You know the amount of money I save uh, not spending on that junk? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I invested in the kingdom of the Lord, uh, and I know this about him. He'll never outgive him. Uh, He'll never owe you anything. He said, if I was hungry, I won't let you know. Uh, He said, if I was hungry, I won't ask you. Uh, He owns everything. And when the balance of the ledger, because God keeps track, When the balance of the ledger tips over to your side that you've given more, here comes the Lord. What do you want? I don't want anything. No, no, no. What do you want? I don't want anything, Lord. Well, I'm going to give this to you anyway. It just comes in Jesus' name. It just happens in Jesus' name. And then every so often he wants to remind you that it's not you. So every so often he makes you go through lean times to make you realize, hey, don't worship what I've given you, worship the one who gave it to you in Jesus' name. So Paul went through this. Was he not godly? Was he not blessed? And he says this in verse 28, beside the other things, what comes up upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches, the care for all the churches. Here's the downside of being a pastor. You care for people so much. That when they leave or they just fall out of the will of God, it grieves you. You know, it just, it takes, it takes something out of you. It's not enjoyable. To, to, and I got to cast that to the Lord every morning. I cast that. And, and until God gives me a release, I keep casting it. And sometimes it goes for months. Sometimes it goes for years. It takes a chunk out of you. But my strength doesn't come from my own. I get strength from him. 
and he gives you promises. He says, it's going to be all right, son. It's going to be all right. As much as you love them, I love them more. Remember, I died for them. You did not. And I have all the power to save them. You don't have. You just keep praying. You just keep fasting. You keep preaching the word of God you keep studying the word of God you keep believing you keep building up your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus I'm not telling you that to make be sorry for me I'm just telling you the truth amen and sometimes I think about that and I, I told the Lord see I told you I didn't want to be a pastor when I was sitting in a service in 1990, and you had dropped it in my spirit. I want to use something great for God. Well, I'm already teaching Bibles. I'm bringing all these people up, playing the drums, uh, you know, leading songs. Uh, I even led a Spanish church being their song leader for one year. And I memorized all the songs in Spanish. I put there, put there, sin igual poder en Jesús, quien murió resucitó. And I thought my Spanish brethren would love that. I memorized all the book songs. I still memorize it today. I did it for one year. I memorized phrases where they prayed them to the Holy Ghost. When the preacher would preach, Predicale, hermano. Habla de lengua, Señor. Recibe el Espíritu Santo. People would receive the Holy Ghost. And they thought I spoke Spanish until after when preaching, I go sit in the back and I got the headphones on. They go, what, what happened? What's wrong with you? I go, I don't speak Spanish. I just heard you. You prayed for me. I received the whole, you go, si habla español muy poquito. I could pronounce, I got good diction because I could pronounce it, but I should learn it more. Really, I should. <laughs> My son's putting me, you know, to shame because he, he's learning more than me. I kind of resent it a little bit. You know, like, you didn't lead the, Spanish servers for one year. What do you know? <laughs> Look at little hill. Oh, I'm kidding. I love him. Amen. But you know, I was so hungry. I just wanted to do the will of God. They didn't have a song leader. And everybody's like, they're asking. I go, well, I'll do it. You speak Spanish? No. How are you going to do it? Dude, I told you I'll do it. I'll do it. If I could read it, I could sing it. Amen. A lot of songs. Good songs. Hallelujah. What is that? Alabare, 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 mi Señor. Oh, my God. It just brings memories. And we'll worship for an hour and a half. Oh, yeah. See, that's how it was in the Philippines. We'll worship those a puddle of sweat on the concrete floor. Amen. And here we worship... 15 minutes, that's oh, a little too long. You don't know what long is. We'll sing one song for 30 minutes. And if the Holy Ghost moves, oh, look out. It'll be 45. One chorus, it'll stretch it out. Amen. Those were good times. Oh, amazing times. Praise God. Praise God. But see, blessing doesn't equal the blessing of God. How do you know that, Pastor? Told, Paul told Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, 5, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Blessing, financial blessing, is God's approval or godliness. He says, from such we draw thyself. But here's what he said, but godliness with contentment is great gain. He katalama. Godliness, being in the will of God. And you're content in the will of God. It's great gain. Praise God. If he never blesses you financially, would you worship him still? If he never heals your body, amen, would you be content and say, I'm going to love you anyway in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah. See, the will of God is the greatest adventure that God's inviting you to come and join him and be led by the presence of the Lord. I don't know if I gave this to you, but verse 7 is so good. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. It's not a takeout. And I say, well, I'm going to bring that. No. 
and having food and raiment, let us there would be content. You got food? You got clothing? That's all you need. The heroes of faith in verse uh, Hebrews 11, just, they just, most of them had just had that, food and clothing. And they were blessed. In fact, the Bible says the world was not worthy of them to be alive in their generation. Oh, praise God. But they that be rich fall into temptation and a snare into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil for which some coveted after they have erred from the faith and perished themselves through with many sorrows. Not money, just the love of money. That's why tithing is so important. It reminds you, this doesn't belong to me. Amen. If you were here last Sunday, it's not really a tenth, it's everything. But God allows us the tenth just to make us honest. Amen. You know, you could do more with less if you trust the will of God. You could give more and you'll have not less but more. Praise God. When he's in it, he owns everything. How many you convinced he owns everything? Everything. He said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And all they that dwell therein, it's his and you're his child. My kids have access to everything I have. I don't tell them that often because they'll use it. <laughs> Amen. I don't really mind, but as long as, you know, there's some limitation to that. Amen. But look at this. You've got to have peace because if you don't, by doing the will of God, see, the devil will mess with you when you do the will of God. He will mess with your mind, telling you, man, that preacher just wants your money. I don't want your money. Did you know this 20 years, I don't take a salary from the church because God has blessed me. I don't need it. Not that I'm proud. I'm storing up for the next generation if God tarries. This building's paid for because of that. Amen. It's paid for. It's a praise. I don't know, 1.62 million now. Maybe more than that because our house is 1.2 million. I, got, I won't pay no, yeah, never mind. But it's not worth that, praise God. So I don't know how much this is worth now. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. And here's the reason why you need to have peace. In Exodus 6, 9, Moses spake to the children of Israel, they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. When you're under tremendous pressure, you can't hear the voice of God. Because right. right. it's, it's filtered through what you're going through. Yeah. Yeah. That's why casting your care is so important. You cast your care so you could hear the voice of God and it could give you assurance, I'm in the will of God. And all things will work together to them that love God and are called according to His purpose or according to His will. And you could hear the voice of God clearly. That's why Joseph ministered in the jail. Why? Because he said, I'm in the will of God. That's why when he eventually promoted a second highest in the land of Egypt, when he was at, at his word, nobody could lift up a finger. And he told his brethren that, that abused him and wanted to kill him and, you know, the, just, just used him. That's a horrible thing to bear when your own brothers and sisters want you dead or sell you. Thank God for one enterprising brother. If we kill him, we're not getting any money. Let's sell the guy. That's why they're all businessmen. <laughs> Goes all the way back to the roots. <laughs> Let's make money off this dude. Thank God. He doesn't know that, but God used that. But you know what? It's not the will of God for Joseph to die. Even if they stabbed him, he won't die. Is Isaac, amen, with Abraham about to slay him in his mind, he's not going to die. Because the will of God is uh, there's going to be from him uh, all these people that are going to be born. 
So when God gives you his promise and his will, you can take it to the bank. Even if it costs your life, you're going to be resurrected. They left Paul for dead. He just got up. So you don't even need to fear death because if it's not your time, your father doesn't allow it. He's the giver of life. He can resurrect you. You know what I'm looking for in the Philippines? When we go next year, God willing, there'll be somebody we get resurrected from the dead. Oh, praise God. That's good and bad news, meaning somebody has to die. Right? We all pray for a miracle, but miracle comes from impossibilities. Oh, I want a miracle. You know what you just said? I want some impossibilities in my life. Now, don't stop praying for a miracle. I felt that little, well, maybe I should return. No, 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 don't be afraid. Amen? See, we experience almost everything in the book of Acts. Your shadow healing people. I haven't seen that yet. I saw it one time. I was afraid. My cousin, my, 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 not my blood cousin, but we, we grew up. And he was in a coffin. I prayed, Lord, do you want to resurrect him? He, his finger twitched. And he, he freaked me out. And I went and sat down. And I told Brother Hernandez, he goes, wow. So the supernatural scares you. I thought he was going to encourage me. He looked at me like, so the super." Bro, the supernatural scares you? Well, how interesting is that? Thank you very much for encouraging me. Now, I feel really bad. The guy could have been living still. I don't know. I feel, you know what? I just cast it to the Lord. I can't go back to my faults in the past and be dragged down. I can't look at the missed opportunities and make me shameful. I'm just here. I'm just going to continue to doing the will of God to the best of his empowerment. I'm just going to keep moving forward and keep believing and keep trusting that he has called all of us and he loves all of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because what happens to you, it, it doesn't necessitate how God sees you. If something bad happens to you, doesn't mean God looks down at you or is punishing you. Right, right. Amen. I think they mentioned this in camp meeting. They stole it from me because I had it here weeks before. <laughs> because how do we react if we allow something that we don't like? Right? We act like spoiled kids. Because it's good all this time. What, what do you, you mean you're going to take that from me now? I'm used to that now. You know, uh, it used to be my bed was my springs. Or is, it, and I, I just, you know, it didn't really bother me. When, when I got married, of course, you know, it's just not me anymore. So I got a better bed. Now it's a better pillow. Purple pillow. And I didn't know about purple. My, my wife asked me, how come you never knew about this purple pillow before? I go, I don't know. How did you find out? I go, Brother David told me. I wouldn't know about purple pillow. Much less care for I thank God. It's really nice. <laughs> thank you, Brother Paul, for bringing it to the camp. I slept on it. Dylan borrowed his mom. He's like, wow, this is nice. I go, don't get any ideas. <laughs> I'm not buying you one yet. <laughs> Amen. But look at this in Matthew 11, verse 6. When Jesus, his ministry increased and John the Baptist decreased. Remember John the Baptist? When Jesus appeared in the scene, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God taketh away the sins of the world. He said, I must decrease, so he must increase. But when the decrease came, he had a problem. So when he was in prison... When he didn't like the will of God. Because the will of God for him was to be beheaded. What kind of God is that? He's not sadistic. He's not fatalistic. But he'll give you grace. He died on the cross. He was beaten. The psalmist wrote to the point that he's... His vesture was marred. You couldn't tell if he was a, 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 an animal or a human being. So he's not asking us to do something he hasn't done. And he's God. He didn't have to do it. 
But he loves you and I, and he chose. He chose you. We didn't choose him. He first chose us. And so while he said, he sent, John sent his disciples, said, ask him. He's, he's my cousin. Ask my cousin. Are you here? Or do we look for another? Just go tell John. The blind see, the deaf hear, and the lame walk. Then he adds this in verse 6. Blessed is he who is not offended in me. When God allows things you don't like, when I don't like, do we get offended at him? Do we blame him? He says, you know, there's nothing happening in my life like, ah. Right? We've all been there, right? To me, that's the hardest when there's nothing happening. Because I know he's a creator. He can create things. He can just speak and it will be. That's how powerful my daddy is. That's how powerful he is. He, he controls everything. He owns everything. Hallelujah. And so, when his disciples left, this is really what God thought about John. In Luke 7, verse 26. But what went ye out to see a prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. See, God's boasting about John. He wasn't punishing him because he's in jail. He didn't decrease in the sight of God or the will of God. But when his disciples left to tell John, they didn't hear this. They didn't hear this compliment to tell John because he still needed faith to walk in the will of God even though he didn't like it. So he said, yea, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger therefore before my face, which shall prepare the way before thee. For I say unto you among those that are born of women, there is, no, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. That's how Jesus thought about it. Not the, it's not a punishment. That's how the Lord thought now, now think about that statement for a moment. That's the Old Testament. God is saying, John is greater than Elijah or Elisha. God's, John's greater than Moses or Abraham or all the minor and greater prophets, even David, because he also prophesied. He didn't have any miracles. You talk about miracles. Moses, the ten plagues. My God, that's a miracle. Elisha had a double portion of anointing of Elijah. But this is really what he thought about John. When he's going through rough times. Let me let you in in a secret. When you go through tough times. God doesn't think less of you. In fact he thinks highly of you. To trust you. To keep doing his will. When you're going through hardships. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in the house. I feel the presence of God. I feel the love of God. Do not let your trials make you think God thinks less of you or is punishing you. Don't let hard circumstances make you think God doesn't hold you in high regard. He does. He still loves you. That doesn't change. We are all familiar with Job, right? But this is what he didn't know. The conversation in heaven, Job 1 verse 8. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth. A perfect, upright man. One that feareth God. Escheweth evil. That didn't change when he was going through tough times. That didn't change. I didn't change. That's how we saw him. When he lost everything, he said, there's nobody like him. He said, just watch, devil. Take everything he has. Worship's going to come out eventually. 
He's going to realize eventually that my will, my perfect will is the safest place to be in. Just look, devil, when you're done, he's going to be standing still. And he's still going to be my servant. He's going to be my saint. He's going to make it. He's going to be in heaven with me. Throw everything you have at him, devil. I trust him. He knows me. He knows my will. He's going to persevere. He's not going to let me down that's how I see him and that's how God sees every one of us everything that you go through God is saying I've got confidence in you I trust you I'll reveal my will to you that's how I see you in Jesus name now I got to get to this I'm conscious of the time but I got to get to this the contrast of his will is your will. He's going to, the devil's going to convince you to do your will. And your will's always easy. Because it's easy not to pray and not to fast than to pray and fast, isn't it? It's easy to miss out church. You know, there were times I had to work. I told you about my blessing. That, that, that was a journey. That didn't happen overnight. Okay, you're seeing the end of, of, of years of just following the will of God, following the will of God. So don't, don't compare yourself, well, I'm not there. You know, you got to walk. I saw baby Faith walk. She'll run one day. Amen. You got to walk. Those, those came out of, 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 of just consistently. I want to do your will, Lord. I want to do your will. Amen. And he's going to say, Hey, you, you, you need to do your own will. See, you are made in the image of God. In the image of God. You know why you're in the image of God? Not because God looks like you. No. That'd be horrible, right? You know, you look up. One day we get to the throne room. And it looks like, I don't know, whoever you know. Like, I don't know about you. That'd be a letdown to me. I'm like, no, please, no. For eternity, no. Just no. Mm -mm. Lord, have mercy. Don't make it look like my cousin. No. No, 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 no. I'm going to hold on to the book of Revelation. His eyes are like jasper eyes. His vestures like bronze. He's glorious. He's majestic. He's God. Praise God. Can you see it? In the name of Jesus. I want to see that. I want to see that. I want to be around that. It's like, like being around the sun. Like the radiation of the sun. And not being consumed. Just You know when Moses asked the Lord, I want to see your face. He said, you can't see me. You're going to die. Well, I'll pass by you and you'll see my hinder parts. But one day we're going to see him as he is. And we're going to be like him. Sons of God. But it's your will or God's will. And Satan will tempt you to do your will. I'm hurrying. Ezekiel 28, verse 13 to 15. I know we got service at 3.30. Thou hast been, this is talking about Lucifer, before he was Satan. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, gold, and the workmanship of thy tablets. It was prepared and created in thee in the day that was created. Now notice, when God created Satan, Lucifer, he had jewels. Because the Shekinah glory of God should have been reflected into him and back to the angels of God who worship the Lord. But he wanted to keep that for himself. But notice what, what he had. Uh, can you do that? The, back up where the jewels are. Carbuncle. Can you go back a little bit more? Right there is gold. Right? God took that. He says, I'll make that pavement in heaven. What people wear today. Valuable. Valuable. It'll just be pavement. It'll be asphalt in heaven. So guess what? You're wearing asphalt. Hello? That's why I don't wear them. I'll walk on them one day. I ain't buying it down here. 
Hello? I sold my, you know, the only gold I kept it was my dad gave me. It, it was his gold watch, and I don't even wear it. I don't know how much it is now, six grand maybe. Maybe one day if I get it in me, maybe not. My sisters and my brother will be up in arms if I sell that thing. But he gave it to me. I could do whatever I want with it, right? If they're listening, come to church. I won't sell it. <laughs> I don't buy that. Why well, am I buying something I'm going to be treading on? Where I'm going? Why well, am I going to wear that? Right? Why am I going to hold it in high regard? It'd just be pavement. It's part of the pearl. It's a gate in heaven. Praise God. Maybe some other time if God allows me to expound on that. But verse 14, or, or yeah, thou art the anointed chair that covereth. I have set thee so. Thou was up on the holy mountain of God. Thou was walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Guess what? What is iniquity? I know some Greek scholar says it's, 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 uh, uh, what is it? Lawlessness, but it's just the result of iniquity. So guess what he's trying to get you to do so you won't make it to heaven and go to hell with him is self-will. Amen. So I want to do the will of God, not mine. Because the reality is if you do your will, you make your own choices without God leading you, guiding you, your choice does not guarantee it's going to happen exactly how you chose it. In fact, if you do your own will, you're gambling. Amen? How many of you went to school for something and you're not even practicing it? See, I, I, I wanted to be a mechanical engineer. I, I put, you know, and here I am preaching. I'm not knocking it, but it just, there's no guarantee. You buy a car, it might break down. You know, I had job offers to go to Northern California back in 92. Uh, they offered me 80 grand back in 92. That was good money. It still is, I guess, today. But then what would happen to my life without the will of God? I've, offer, I've had offers. I've had stuff that I knew it was not the will of God. One time, God wanted me to give my car... To a guy I didn't like. That was tough, Brother Jay. That was really tough. He was working in my house, and he's a plumber. I go, hey, how's your car? It's not good. And the voice of God to give you a car. So, you have, you're going to buy another car? No, I can't afford it. Voice of God. Give your car. I'm like, you want my car? He goes, what? You need a car, right? Yeah. Why well, you can have my car? Are you serious? And you could always almost see in his eyes, like, you don't even like me. <laughs> and I would have said, you are correct, sir. And this is how God, not only did he want me to give my car, he wanted me to fix it first and give it to him. So I took it to Wally. A Mitsubishi Mirage. You remember those? You guys are too young. One of the first ones had the automatic seat belts. You put on your seat belt whether you like it or not. He'll strap you to that seat. He'll strangle you if you're not ready. I gave it to him. He was kind of thankful. But you know, God was testing my spirit. And you could do what I want you to do when you don't like it. Do you want to do what you want to do? Does this car belong to you or is it mine? No, I'm not saying you just, you know, jump up. Ah, I'm going to do the will of God every time. No, it's not like that. It's just there's, there's a little struggle sometimes. But you work through that. I said, you work through it. 
Because you know it's the will of God. Because you know there is a blessing there. Uh, Not materially. I don't care about that. I want him. Uh, I want to be close to him. If that brings me closer to him, bring it on. I'll give you my car today. It's 20 years old. I'll give it to you. It's as old as Dana. It's 2003. It's a great car. I scraped the side, the driver's side, because we went fishing in but the 91 there, remember that? And there was a little pole I didn't, know, I didn't see, so I backed up. And I'm like, man, this, my car's not moving. So I'm just stepping on an accelerator even more. And I go, Whoosh! I go, oh, my God. Then Brother Luke was so mad, he, he uprooted that thing, that, that, that pole, he threw it. <laughs> and I look at the side, and I'm like, my God. You know what I did? Home Depot, spray paint, enamel white. Psst. Looks nice. I mean, if you look at it, you'll see it right there on the driver's side all the way. See, I'm past now of, you know, looking cool, right? Because I, I can't help it. I, I look cool. She comes naturally. <laughs> I'm lighting it up because here's some heavy stuff coming right now. You ready? You ready? Matthew 7, verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. He that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. This terrifies me. Because you could have religion. You could even know him as Lord. But if you don't do his will, if you're making your own decisions, nobody ever tells you no. You don't ever consult with anybody. You don't have a pastor in your life. You just do as you please. You're not going to make it. Because most of the time the will of God is preached through the man of God. It's preached through the word of God. It's through the anointing of God. Amen. And if you never have anybody that tells you no or you consult, you're a God to yourself. You're like what they did in the Kings. In the book of Kings or first and second Kings, they did what was right in their own eyes. I'm a pastor. I am. How old I am? Am I? I'm 56 years old. I know. Take a good look. I don't look 56. Maybe 46. Right, Sister Ella? Amen. At least she agrees. I could pass for 40. Some people actually. I used to work with, for a guy. Uh, with a guy, rather. He, I saw, showed him a picture of, of me when I was in, you know, my teen years. And he goes, are you a vampire? I go, what? You don't age, man. I go, that's in the genes. Did you know uh, that genes? No, I shouldn't say that. I think. No, I don't say that. Preach, Amen. Okay. The lady says preach. This is some heavy stuff right here. Not everyone. See, you could confess with your mouth, but if it's not in the will of God. Verse 22, many will say to me in that day, the day of judgment. And notice, these are not just ordinary people that didn't do anything by our standards for God. Many will say to me in that day, in the day of judgment, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? They prophesied. It seems like they know the name of Jesus. And in thy name cast out devils. They're, they're doing supernatural things. And in thy name done many wonderful works another translation says many wonderful miracles they know the name it seems to be religious what they're doing right but verse 23 says then I will profess to them I never knew you you live your life in this way that's not approved on me even this good things that you did was not approved by me. We never, you never consulted my will. You never asked me if I wanted to heal that person. You never asked me if I want to cast that devil. You never asked me if that miracle is what I wanted. But you operated it according to your own will. I'm telling you this terrifies me. See the more you're used of God. It's harder to be saved. God help us. And here's the qualifier. You that work iniquity. Iniquity is the sin of the devil. He wanted to make his own decisions. 
See, ye, the devils and the angels are not given the privilege to make decisions. Oh, they can decide, but they don't have the privilege to make independent decisions. So there are angels that are made just to worship God. There are angels that are made that they can't even look God, look at God. There's an angel before the throne uh, has six wings. Uh, one uh, with twain or two they flew. With two they covered their feet and the other two covered their eyes and all they're made for was cry, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Every single moment, every single day. But you, you're made in the image of God to decide, to have a will. That's why the devil hates you so much, because he made one decision, wrong decision, and his fate is sealed forever. There's no forgiveness for him. But here, you and I, every day, we make wrong choices. But we can repent, Amen. and God forgives us. Why? Because he gave us the privilege to choose. He's just banking on you and I choosing him. Choosing his will and not our will. Would you stand? His will. It's not a drudgery. There's safety. There's benefits. There's joy. There's peace. Romans 4 verse 7 saying, Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven. And whose sins are covered. Iyanamosori katahai. Could you thank him right now for every time that he has forgiven you. Every time he's invited you back, come let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they'll be white as wool. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord will not impute sin. Why? Because he's in love with you. And the true expression of loving him back is choosing his will. Though at times it may be hard, though at times you may be confused by it, but in the end, those that chose the will of God were saved. Job was saved. He said some incredible stuff. Questioning God. Insisting on his own righteousness. He said, I don't deserve this. And God, so ever loving, even indulged him. He said, where were you when I created the heavens and the morning star sang and rejoiced? John the Baptist was saved, even though he kind of stumbled a little bit with the will of God. Moses was saved even though when he chose and forsook Egypt being a prince being in line to rule at some capacity his blessing didn't happen right away he was in the desert for 40 years and I could imagine the devil working on his mind messing with him you missed the will of God nothing's happening Look at you, you're here, you're forgotten, nobody knows your name. You could have ruled in Egypt. You're, you're a dummy, you made a mistake, you're a fool to serve God. Who is this God that has forgotten you? See, that's what he always does. He wants us to be short-sighted, to make our own decisions, when in fact, God thinks so highly of us when we go through this. Paul knew this. Paul had such a great revelation that he was given a thorn in his side. But at the end, he said this in 2 Timothy 4 verse 8, But watch thou in all things, be clear-headed, be sober, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, in other words, teach the word of God, evangelize your neighborhood, Make full proof of your ministry. God has called you to minister. A preacher is not the only minister. All of us. Then he said this, For I am now ready to be offered. He's ready to die. 
I'm now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand I have fought a good fight it's a fight sometimes to do the will of God but it's a good fight you've got to have an attitude and an appetite to fight you can't just give in to what you want. That's the easy way. I have fought a good fight. He said, at one time I fought the beasts of Ephesus. He said, I've finished my course. I'm ready to graduate. I pass all the courses, all the prerequisites that God wants me to do in His will lessons that I've learned and passed by His grace. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. I kept believing His will. I'm convinced more and more that the will of God is so amazing and so glorious and so beneficial. You won't get bored. It's the greatest adventure of your life. You'll build your faith. You'll seek miraculous things. Then he said, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me that day, and not me only. So that includes us. But unto all them that also love his appearing. When you're looking for His will, endeavoring to do His will, you're looking for His appearing. Oh, His coming. It's sooner than you ever have ever thought it would be. In fact, it is at the door. He's knocking. And one day, when we stand before Him, if we've already done His will, what matters to him will matter more and more to us. I know we need to all work, but it should not be an impediment doing the will of God. Your strength and your, not, your time should not be invested in a corporate world on a salary. God is your provider. And if you would seek the will of God and you, and you get tired and say, God, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to spend my life for God like this. I want to teach a Bible study. I want to host a connect group. I want to witness to some. I want to pray for somebody that they get healed. I want my shadow, Lord, to heal people. I want a handkerchief off of me that I could send and mail to my loved ones and friends and they could be healed. I want to pray for the sick that they recover. I want the dead to rise. So God, I want to experience your will. God will make a way for you. See the will of God? It's a great adventure. It's amazing. Oh, the depth and the wisdom of God is it, it is past finding out. And the only guarantee that your choices are mine are exactly going to produce how we chose it is to be in the will of God. It's not gambling. And when you look back at your life, as you get older, you'll have few regrets knowing the Lord ordered my steps. He ordered my steps. I'm okay of who I am not. I don't pretend to be somebody I'm not. I'm okay who I am. My strengths and I'm weak, my weaknesses power of Christ may rest upon me would you find a place to pray right now and just would you just seek his will would you pray sincerely and say father I want it to be your will and not mine Lord that I may overcome my fears overcome Lord my desires overcome what I want whatever I have to seemingly give up oh God I'm not really giving up anything because godliness with contentment is great gain. It's peace. It's joy. It's love. It's the greatest adventure. There's great assurance that everything will work out for the good. There's safety there. 
There's peace. And even if we have to suffer like the apostles did, like you did, you're going to give us the grace, even the joy. Like Stephen looked up with joy seeing you. He Does anybody want to, to follow the will of God? Does anybody really want to, to know his will? Every single day I want to make a choice, Lord, to ask you. I'm not going to make my own choices. I'm not going to just decide on my own, oh God. I want your will in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody pray right now. Would you pray his will? Even the man Christ Jesus, when he prayed in the garden, when he knew what he was asking was not the will of God, it was the will of the flesh. He said, nevertheless, Father, not my will, but thine be done. When you pray and you don't know if it's the will of God, you pray that caveat and say, Father, nevertheless, not my will, but thine. You'll never go wrong. You and I need to decide what is more important to you. You and I need to decide because it's a choice. Your will or his. But I tell you, if you choose His will every single day, you experience Him. You will experience Him. You will experience satisfaction and pleasure more than you've ever imagined in your life. You'll have peace that passes understanding. You'll have joy unspeakable and full of His glory. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness, completeness of joy. In His right hand, there's pleasures unending forevermore. Oh, the will of God. It's not restrictive. It's amazing. Oh, the will of God. The peace that it brings. It's glorious. There's things coming to this world that you and I will need the peace of God. There's things that are coming quickly to this world that we will need the will of God in our lives. Pursue His will now. Prepare yourself now. Choosing His will so that when it really does matter, you've already established that discipline of choosing Him. I choose Him. I choose Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Continue praying in the name of the Lord.